dollar. We're seeing the higher prices uh, across sectors. The consumer is seeing them at, at the checkout counter, at the pump, uh, the price of milk, the price of bread, the price of lumber, uh, the price of steel is less expensive. It's less expensive to build in ste with steel right now in the U.S. than it is with lumber. I mean, that's kind of crazy. So we're, I think, all focused on the meaning of this word transitory. We're seeing the inflation. The Fed said they were going to let it run hot. So you get these higher prices. Does transitory, Tyler, mean that it goes up and then it comes back down? Or does it just stay up and then sort of, as I think that's what it means, and then we get back to this sort of 2% or sub-2% GDP growth going forward? I sense that that's what's happening. But the Fed is calling for a very precise result from a very imprecise and messy economic process that's evolving. So, you know, this is, the, this is where we're all on stage. You know that dream where you go on stage and you don't have your script and you don't have the lines? That's where we are with what the Fed is doing, how the economy's unfolding, and we're waiting to see what's going to happen to inflation. All of that aside, we've got great tailwinds of lots of liquidity, an economy that's reopening, a population that's getting vaccinated, and consumers with cash who are spending. So it's a tough environment in which you yeah. bet against stocks. You know, this, um, this ex inflation experiment, Ron, seems, you know, logical in a theoretical and intellectual way. But from the consumer standpoint, as Michael pointed out, they are feeling it right now. And, and I don't usually plow through the University of Michigan Consumer Sentiment Survey, but today it was very interesting because 43 percent surveyed that they expect inflation prices to rise 5 percent over the yeah. next year. And that in and of itself, I would think, could cause... Um, an inflationary psychology, the psychology of the consumer could yes. change, which then could change uh, the the contours of the recovery. Yeah, absolutely. And but 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 Melissa, they also have you know a fifteen percent savings rate, which someone on CNBC remarked this morning was six trillion dollars. So to a certain extent. Some of those price increases could be accommodated by both the very loose monetary policy and the very loose fiscal policies that we have right now. And people might be willing to live with it for a period of time and then start to dial back their purchases if it becomes sticky. And so it's hard to tell. When you look at all the inflation break-evens, they're well above where they were, you know, even just a couple months ago, both in five-year and 10-year uh, duration. So, yeah, I, I'm more concerned about it. You know, I'm not in the modern monetary theory camp that, you know, believes you can run this really, really hot forever, spend a ton of money, and then use tax policy uh, to, to fix inflation. I think at some point, the Fed has to make a choice, given how loose fiscal policy is, to start thinking about thinking about dialing it back a little in some form or another <laughs> to, um, to kind of reduce what might become embedded inflationary psychology. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.